2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Today we'll go to part 36 of the series titled Doers of the Word. The sermon is titled, The Mercy of God is Bigger Than Your Mistake. Number one, we have all sinned in one area or another. Every one of us, without exception, have sinned at one point or another in our lives. No exception. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, you can put it on the screen. It says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. What is the Lord saying today? Every one of us, at one point or another, was a sinner. Every one of us, without exception, we are alive by the shared mercy of God. In Psalm 130 verse 3, Psalm 130 verse 3, it says, If thou were to mark iniquity, O God, who can stand? Let me explain that very quickly. God says, if he is to mark iniquity in our lives, if he is to identify every sin in our lives, that nobody will be able to stand. So let me demonstrate that a little bit. If every time that you sin, God puts a mark on your face, what will your face look like today? Many people will not even have any space left in their face to put a mark. Because if, according to that passage, Psalm 130 verse 3, if God were to mark iniquity, who can stand? None of us shall be able to stand. I pray for you today that that God Almighty that has been showing mercy, that has not allowed your iniquity to be made known, that God will never forsake you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please go ahead and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for not putting me to shame publicly. Thank you for not putting a mark on my face. Each time I do something wrong, each time I say something wrong, each time I have sinful thoughts in my heart, thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Number two, sin has long-term consequences. Oh, you may sin right now. The consequences of that sin may last for the next 50 years, the next 100 years. Sin has long-term consequences. In Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, Romans 6, verse 1 to 2, it says, Shall we continue in sin and expect grace to abound? God forbid. Whenever you sin, God withdraws his spirit from you and God withdraws his grace upon your life. And of course, when the grace of God is removed, Satan has an easy and unrestricted access to mess up your life. Sin has long-term consequences. I pray for somebody today Whatever may be the consequences of your iniquity, of your sin, that is still working against you or your family, may the mercy of God today wipe it away in the mighty name of Jesus. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 26 to 27. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 26 to 27. This is a story of Gehazi. A man that was destined to be great. That prophet Elisha, God double portion of the anointing upon prophet Elijah. And if everything were to work according to that plan, when it is time 
for Prophet Elisha to go and be with the Lord. He will transfer the anointing to Gehazi. Now, double the anointing, most likely. So, Gehazi will have been four times as anointed as Prophet Elijah. But Gehazi got greedy, like many Christians today. You are busy running after what God has not given you. You are busy lusting after what does not belong to you. You are busy consumed with jealousy over what somebody else possesses. You want to hammer. You want to arrive. You want to live big. You are not ready to be patient. Gehazi wanted to have her. Gehazi wanted to make him. He ran after the man that Prophet Elisha had just prayed for. Oh, my, my, my master wants to entertain some people. He needs money. He needs clothes. He, needs... he collected all those things. And then went back to the house and pretended as if nothing has happened. Prophet Elisha said to him, Gehazi, where have you been? Huh? Master, I didn't go anywhere. I have been here. I have been praying, fasting, studying my Bible. I didn't go anywhere at all. The man of God looked at him and said, what a shame, Gehazi. What a pity. You were destined to be great. But greed has destroyed your future. From today, Gehazi, May the leprosy of Naaman cleave upon you and upon your seed forever. Let me explain that. Not only did Gehazi become leprous immediately, he became a leper immediately. Everyone that was born in his family from that moment forward was leprous. The sin of Gehazi affected his family, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, everyone in his lineage. What is God saying to you, my brother, my sister? Whenever you see the consequences will go beyond you as a person. Not only will you face the consequences, innocent people that didn't know anything about the sin will suffer. For it. Plenty of examples in the Bible. When Achan sinned, thousands of people suffered. Many died, even though they knew nothing about the sin of Achan. When Samson committed adultery, he was the only one who did it. But thousands of Israelites we are killed and their generation we are taken into slavery because, this, because of the sin of one man. When you sin, innocent people will share in the blame. Please lift up your hands wherever you are. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart that whatever consequence of sin that is running in your family, wherever that sin originates from, that consequence of sin that is still causing suffering, causing pain, causing failure, causing frustration in your family. May the blood of Jesus wipe it away in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, very quickly. Stop the damage. Approach the throne of grace. Stop the damage. Approach the throne of grace. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, if we, come, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and God is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does that mean for you, my brother, my sister? The moment you make a decision to admit that you have done something wrong, the moment you make a decision to confess that sin, the moment you make a decision 
today repent from that sin. The consequences of the sin is arrested. When you admit, confess, and repent, the damage stops. Let me say it again. When you admit your sin, you confess your sin, and you repent from it, the damage, the consequences are arrested. And when the repentance is sustained, when the repentance is sustained, the restoration begins. Because some people will repent today, they go back tomorrow to their sin. Some will confess today, oh, pray for me, Pastor. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Before that day is over, they are back into the sin. You are deceiving yourself. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sweat, the same shall he reap. But if your repentance is genuine, if your repentance is sustained, restoration begins. Please lift up your hands wherever you may be in the auditorium or joining us from all over the world. Wherever you may be, I pray for you that the grace not only to admit but the grace to confess, the grace to repent and the grace to genuinely sustain that repentance so that restoration can commence in your life. May God release that grace unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please go ahead and say to God, your Father, please have mercy on me. Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I am hearing your word, Father, directly. Please have mercy on me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Point number four. Stop the guilt. Nobody may know that you have stolen money. Nobody may know that you have slept with somebody who is not your husband. Somebody who is not your wife. Nobody may know. Nobody may know that you are not paying your tithe, that you are a robber, like the Bible says. Nobody may know. You may be praising God, worshipping God. You may look like a saint, like an angel. Nobody may know. But you, you know. You know, you know that something is not right with your life. And it is that knowledge, that guilt, that fear, that sorrow, that tortures. There are many people today, they can't sleep well. Nobody has arrested them, but they know that something is not right in their lives. Some people today are still in sorrow because of what they did five years ago, ten years ago. Nobody has discovered, but they themselves are in torment because they know that there is something that is not right in their lives. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of deliverance. Whatever sorrow you have been going through, whatever guilt that you have been suffering, whatever fear you may have concerning something that you did in the past, and whatever way that you have been going through torture, because of a sin, a mistake, something you did wrong in the past that is torturing you. May God Almighty deliver you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Romans 8 verse 1. Say, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. If you have admitted your sin, if you have confessed your sins, if you have repented from your sins, there is complete freedom from the Lord. He wipes away any record of your sinful past. The question is, have you confessed? Have you repented? If you have, it's time for you to enjoy your freedom in Christ. It's time for you to enjoy your freedom in Christ. For as many of you as are still in fear, as are still harboring guilt of something you did in the past, even though you have confessed, even though you have repented, every spirit of fear in your life, 
I cast out in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of guilt in your life, I cast out in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that you did in the past that is still torturing you, even though you have given your life to Christ, I cast out that, that torture. I cast out that spirit of guilt in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 8 verse 36. John 8 36. It says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If you have given your life to Christ, if you have confessed the sin, if you have forsaken it, you are free indeed. I pray for somebody here. The grace to enjoy the freedom in Christ. Receive that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Point number five. The mercy of God is bigger than your mistake. The mercy of God is bigger than your mistake. Therefore, embrace his mercy. Embrace his love. Embrace his joy. There is nothing that you have done wrong that somebody else has not done before. You committed abortion. You killed somebody. You committed fornication. You committed adultery. You stole. There is nothing that you did that no one has done before. You are not the first to do it. What you need to do is to come to the throne of grace and ask for the mercy of God. There is nobody too bad for God to save. You cannot be too bad for the blood of Jesus to wash you clean. Nobody is too bad for God to use. Nobody. <laughs> Most of the heroes in the Bible we are big, big time sinners. Most of the people that wrote the Bible, we are big, big, big time sinners. I'll show you a few examples of the mighty men of, the, of God. Many of them, we are not perfect, just like you are not perfect. That is why I say again, nobody is too bad for God to sin. And nobody is too bad for God to use. Please let me tell your neighbor, you can never be too bad for God to save you. Say to the other neighbor, you can never be too bad for God to use you for his glory. Example number one, the adulterous woman. In John chapter 8, verse 3 to 11, you can study it on your own. John chapter 8, verse 3 to 11. The Bible said they caught her in the very act guilty as charged. The Bible said they brought her. I, I always wonder, where is the man? They brought her. What happened to the man? Did the man not commit adultery? But we'll talk about that later. They, they brought her. They, they brought her to Jesus and said, Jesus, we caught her. <laughs> we, we saw her. We were watching. We, we were watching from the window. We saw her. We saw her. And the Bible said the woman herself did not argue. He said to Jesus, this is a very simple matter. The law of Moses is very clear. Anybody that commits adultery should be stoned to death. Here we are, Jesus. We have our stones. And we are ready to kill her. What is your opinion, Jesus? The Bible said Jesus looked on the floor. He didn't even respond. And they said, Rabbi, what is your opinion in this matter? It's very clear. We have the stone. We are ready to obey the law of Moses. And Jesus lifted up his head and said, Whosoever is, with, is without sin, let him be the first to cast the stone. All the people that were accusing her, we are sinners themselves. That is the reality of life. The people that you think are saints, many of them are not better than you. So there is nothing to be ashamed of, but rather for you to come crying before your maker. Because that is the only person that you are answerable to. So come before your maker and say, Lord, I've messed up. 
have mercy on me. The Bible said Jesus looked at that woman and said, woman, where are the people that accused you? Where are the people that were ready to kill you, to stone you to death? She looked at her, they had all gone. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. You've done something wrong. You have sinned. You have committed adultery, a very grievous sin. I forgive you. Go and sin no more. That story is still saving many lives today. Across the world, the mercy of God is bigger than your mistake. There is no sin that you have committed that the mercy of God cannot override. If you come crying, praying genuinely for mercy. Praise the Lord. Example number two. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. The 419. This man lived a life of fraud. He defrauded people. But one day, he said to himself, no, I cannot continue to live like this. The Bible said Jesus was in town. Just as Jesus is around today. Today, Jesus is here. Jesus is right beside you. Try here to, to transform your life. The Bible said, Zacchaeus said, I must see Jesus today. I am tired of a life of fraud. I am tired of a life of deceiving people, robbing people, living a life of life. He climbed the tree. He said, I must see Jesus today. I must, I must turn a new leaf today. The Bible said, Jesus, when he got there, looked at him. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. Come down. Today, I'm coming to your house to dine with you. The king of kings wants to go to the house of a sinner, of a 419, of a fraudster, of a yahoo yahoo boy, to go to his house and dine with him. That is the purpose of the sermon today. What is it that you have done wrong in your life? What sin have you committed? The mercy of God is bigger than that sin. If only you can surrender the sin and come to the throne of mercy, your life will be different. God will wipe away everything you've done wrong in your life. A final example for today. So, who later became Paul. The Bible said this man was very, very bad. Three things about his life that <laughs> he was an arrogant man. I know the Bible said God resists the proud. Paul was proud. Very proud. Paul was a blasphemer. Anytime he hears what people are preaching about Jesus, he gets hungry. He twists things around. And then Paul was a murderer. He supervised the killing of the man of God, Stephen. He was there. He supervised the murder of a man of God. But with all of that evil, Jesus said, this man is a chosen vessel. The people of God around said, no, no, Jesus, you are making a mistake. You can save the woman of adultery. You can save Zacchaeus the 419, but this one, this one, this, this one. I ah, no, 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 you are making a mistake. This one is too bad to use. And Jesus replied, he is a chosen vessel. I see chosen vessels here today. I don't know what you have done wrong in your life, but God is here. To do something glorious in your life. You are not too bad for God to save. You are not too bad for God to use. And certainly, if God can make Saul a chosen vessel, you also can be a chosen vessel. That's the message of today. The mercy of God is bigger than your mistake. My brother, my sister, what have you done wrong in your life? 
What sin have you committed that nobody else has done before? Just come to the mercy throne. God will wipe away all that sin and give you a new beginning. You are here today. Say, Pastor, thank you for that word from the Lord. I am the one that God is talking to. I want to surrender my life to God. I am tired of the life that I'm living. I am tired of the life of struggle. I am tired of the life that is without peace. Please pray with me. Pray for me. I want to surrender my life to this God of mercy. Please come. And you are here today. You are already born again. You have surrendered your life to Jesus. But somehow, you've done something wrong. Maybe nobody even knows about it. But you know that your life is not right with God. I don't know what you've done. All that God has laid in my heart is to tell you that His mercy is bigger than your sin. His mercy is bigger than your mistake. Whatever that issue is, whatever it is that you did wrong, the mercy of God is here for you today. And God laid it in my heart to say to you, you are not too bad for me to help. You are not too bad for me to forgive. And you are not too bad for me to make you a chosen vessel. So you are here and say, Pastor, I need to reconcile with God. I need to, to come clean with my God. Please come. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. Come. And as you come, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. The mercy of God is bigger than your mistake. Let me first pray for those who are surrendering their lives to Christ. If you are surrendering your life to Christ for the first time, just say after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Save me. Help me. Be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are free amen you are the altar please lift up your hands unto god and say father i surrender my sin at your feet i confess lord that i have sinned against you lord i repent of my sin today please wash me clean with the blood of jesus set me free oh god and use me, Father, use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.